It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Are you glad you're here? Yes. Are you glad you're here? Yes. Amen. I believe you are. Now, uh, happy Father's Day. Fathers and the men in the church turn. So, happy Father's Day to all of you. And I'm looking around and I'm seeing a good, good number of men in the church today. And that's wonderful. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is... Uh, we're doing something a little different for Father's Day. We are actually going to ask the deacons to come up because I have a little sailboat for them because oops, because they're going to help us along our journey and our adventure. And I want to have you all see who the deacons are. And first of all, uh, David McCaig. Are you here? And these, these sailboats are not just sailboats. They have special messages on them. And I'm going to read them to you. This one says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. As for you. And Larry Parsley. This one says, trust in the Lord, because that's what we are doing first. We're trusting in the Lord for our future. And uh, Rupert Wright, Rupert Wright. This one says, as he's coming, I'll read it. Blessed is, is the man who trusts in the Lord. And then we'll ask Bill Dotson to come forward. Here you go. This one says, he shall direct your paths. Now, all of you know these men, right? Anderson? It's so small, I'll have to read it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, they that um, wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. And Tom Vitz. Tom Vitz. Where he leads, I will follow. Uh, Rod Clemen. I don't know if he can come. Can you, yeah, there you are. Um, be still and know that I am God. <laughs> he, he's so obedient. <laughs> and John Ranoski. With God, all things are possible. Is Rick Lazardi here? Okay. And uh, Gene Seaman. No. Those are our deacons. Thank you. Thank you, men. Now we'd like all of the fathers and the men in the church to stand. Christina and Precious are going to help us. You have yours. Go ahead and hand them out. Stand up so they can stand up so they can identify you. We have a Bible marker for you. And I've been told before that I'm supposed to do some kind of a song and dance because there's like a pause here, but I can't do that. Lois Ann, <laughs> maybe it's for you. <laughs> but um, we do want to take time to have you all be recognized as men in the church, and we appreciate you. And keep standing while they hand out the book marker to you. But also, there's two special markers. One of them has a little sticker on the front. If it has a lighthouse on it, let me know who you are. Yay! Okay. Come on. I want Ralph. 
here, Ralph. This is for you to snack on. You might share it with folks. I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ralph. And also, if you have a sticker that has a little Bible on it, I believe it says Deuteronomy. Huh? The one in the blue that's sitting down. Oh, a fella in blue sitting down has it, Precious tells me. That's you. Okay, it's Mr. Epperson. <laughs> this is God, God's wisdom for fathers. Mr. Epperson, Mr. Epperson is kind of special to me, by the way. When I was a young girl, he actually went to the same church I did in uh, Hawaii. And uh, my parents were friends with him, too. He was a deacon in that church, too. So it's nice to see you. Okay, you can, you can sit down. Now I have one other thing. The pastor, would you come here? He's got to help us here. This one says, God is my strength and power, and he makes my way perfect. Is that for you? And uh, here's some little goodies for you. Oh. We're the breakfast. But he's also, this is a measuring tape that he's going to use to measure our progress. Amen. <laughs> Thank you very much. God bless you. All God's people said, amen. amen. Let's bow in prayer. Our Father, I thank you for your presence in this place today. God, I thank you that we can just worship your name. And Lord, that we can lean on to your understanding. And Lord, that you are present in this place to speak to our hearts and to our lives. And God, we want to just right now worship you in spirit and in truth. And enjoy the excitement of serving you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Worthy of worship, page three. Worthy of worship. Let's stand together and sing. I'm a little loud, so y'all just pray with me, okay?
just gets me going. Now, now you, let's give the Lord a hand. Now let's continue our singing with Majesty 215, Majesty.
may be seated. Our script scripture reading comes from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. These are the words of Moses, and sometimes they're identified as the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Are y'all tired of standing up? Go ahead and stand up again then. <laughs> We're going to worship the Lord, amen? And that's why we came today is to worship the Lord and give glory and honor to him. His name is wonderful. Him 203. His name is wonderful. We're going to sing it two times through. of all ages almighty God is he and we can just bow down and worship him this morning amen I love you Lord let's turn to that 212 I love you Lord we're going to sing that twice through
Good morning, church family. As I come to hear that we might pray and thank the Lord for all that he's blessed us with and offer back to him, uh, I ask that you continue to pray for your pastor search committee. We are diligently going through the applicants that we have, and we ask that you pray that God will stand that person up that he has for pastor of Parkdale. Go with me in prayer now. God bless. Father, we just thank you for loving us. We thank you that you have chosen us and blessed us with so very much. Father, as we give back a portion that is yours, we ask that you bless it, that it might be used for your glory and in your will, and that you'll bless the giver, that you'll forgive us of our sins and guide us that we might share the light of this world, Jesus Christ, that others might come to know him. We ask these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
special morning when we can honor fathers. And, uh, you know, Father's Day hasn't been around long as Mother's Day. Did y'all know that? Uh, in fact, I want to share a little information, and I normally don't do this, but I want to share a little information with you. In 1924, U.S. Pre President Calvin Coolidge officially urged Americans to celebrate a National Father's Day. By 1966, Lyndon Baines Johnson signed a presidential proclamation designating the third Sunday of June as Father's Day. President Richard M. Nixon signed in 1972 bill making the ho holiday legal, official, and permanent. That hasn't been too long ago, right? I want to tell you another story about that. Father's Day started in 1909. Sonora Smart Dodd, a young person in Spokeman, uh, Washington, was listening to a Mother's Day sermon in church. Sonora's mother had died at childbirth, and her father, Henry Jackson Smart, a Civil War veteran and a farmer, was raising Sonora and her five siblings as a single parent. Sonora decided then to celebrate a special day honoring her father. So, Father's Day is legal, right? Uh, and what is Father's Day to you? What, you know, we have a slogan, real men. Have you, you, you know a lot of real men? In my life, there's been some real men. And you know, when I look at real men, you know, and I know some of you don't know John Wayne, but he was a real man. <laughs> you know, except for the Campbell uh, that he smoked all the time, right? But he was a real man. I mean, he carried himself in such a way that he was a real man. Everybody looked at him and said, man, that's a man. And you know, folks, I don't know what real men are today. I, I, I remember my own father, and I, I, whom I love very, very much. And my own father, who's gone to be with the Lord in glory about three years ago, you know, he didn't teach me how to play baseball. He didn't teach me how to fish. He didn't teach me how to uh, 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 do things that uh, normal kiddos do. My dad did teach me how to work, though. I mean, he was a preacher and a master plumber. And I dug a lot of ditches. And I changed out a lot of underneath sinks and, and, and uh, done a lot of things like that. But the most important thing that my dad taught me in life is the thing that I carry on today is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Now, I discovered how to fish, not very well. I discovered how to play ball, not very well. But I, I, I discovered to do all that. But if it hadn't been for my dad, I may have never discovered to the, be the Christian that I am today. I give credit to my mom and dad that raised me in a home that loved the Lord. That put the Lord first and foremost in their life. And I say my dad was a real man. You know, and my dad, I, I remember uh, my dad crying over his kiddos. Crying over the church. Pleading to God to do something special in the lives of individuals. And I remember his heart. And my, my dad taught me those principles. And forever I will be grateful. And when I die, I want my kids to say, my dad loved the Lord with all his heart, with all his soul, and with all his mind. In our scripture reading today in Deuteronomy, you know, and, and we look at that passage of scripture, and, and when we find, I think fathers need to be consistent. I think that fathers, uh, the problem with fathers many times is the inconsistency. But uh, fathers need to be consistent. And it says here, 
in the passage that we read today that Tom read to us. He says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And he's saying, you know, that you need night and day to show that love and proclaim that love to God and love the Lord thy God with thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. What does that mean? What does that mean to love the Lord thy God with all thy soul, with all thy heart, and with all thy might? What does that actually mean? That means to be absorbed by God. Okay, good. All right, now, we got that going. To be absorbed by God. I mean that everything that comes out to you is not negative and, and everything that comes out of you is not something that is, uh, we have hopelessness. But everything that is so coming out of you, you are saturated with God in your heart, in your life, and he's living within, and he's blessing you, and he's uh, being merciful to you, and you ought to say glory to God in the highest. And just like we sing, uh, sing today, we need to sing majesty. He's so wonderful. He's my Lord. Worship the Lord. Folks, we need to teach our young people to worship the Lord. We need to teach our children to worship the Lord. It's not the songs that we sing. I get so tired of people saying, well, we gotta do hymns or we gotta do uh, praise songs. It doesn't matter. We just need to worship the Lord and get excited about him. We need to be worshiping the Lord. We don't need to be thinking about how we do it. All we need to be thinking about is doing it. And see, that's what I want my kids. I mean, we've been through some dilemmas in our life and my family. And we've been through some situations that, man, folks, I don't want anybody to go through. But in all that, I can still rejoice in God. And all the things that have gone on in my life and all the dilemmas and all the troubles and all the horrific things that happen in our lives, we can still say God is on his throne. And men, we need to teach our families that. We need to show our families that by lifting up. That's a real man that lifts up God and glorifies God. You know, real men put their families first. And the only way I know to put my family first is to go to God when they have problems and difficulties. You know, and I pray for my family. And I get on my knees and I, I ask God to bless my family and to take their hurts and make them into uh, things that last and are abundant. That's what real men do. Real men protect their family. But what we protect our family from is the devil. You know how many times I pray this prayer? at night before I pillow my head, I say, Lord, here's what I want you to do. I want you to build a hedge around my kiddos wherever they are. And Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, you can't have anything to do with my family. And Lord, I want you to whip Satan's ears down. And Lord, I want you to take control of my kids' life and whatever they're going through right now, you solve them and snuggle up to them and give them peace that passes all understanding. You know, I've already trained my kids. I've already taught them the things that they need to do in life. And I've already preached to them. And I've already told them what to do. And now all I can do is protect them through prayer. 
All I can do is pray for them and put them in my prayers every day and be a real man that says, hey, listen, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm reminded of the scripture, train a child in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they'll not depart from it. Some of my kids, I'm waiting for them to get old. Because they've kind of departed away from it a little bit. But the Bible says, you know, they'll always go back to their roots. I want to read something to you that is, surprises me, and I have to put on my cheaters and everything. I'm a little bit more unorganized because I did it all today. But I want to I want to read this to you. Let me get in the light. Many years ago, a small Jewish boy asked his father, "Why must we surrender our Jewish faith and start to attend the Lutheran services here in Germany?" The father replied, "Son, we must abandon our faith so people will accept us and support our business adventures. The young lad never got over this disappointment and bitterness. His faith in his father and his religion were crushed. When the lad, the young lad never got over it and when the lad left Germany, he went to England to study at the British Museum, where he formed a philosophy of life. From those intensive investigations, he wrote a book that changed the world called, called The Communist Manifesto. From the book, one third of the word fell under the spell of Marxism, ideology. The boy was Karl Marx. Do you hear that? Is that a sad story? That's a sad story because folks, listen. His dad did not stand up for what he believed in. He did not stand up for who he was and where he came from. And the Bible says here in Deuteronomy that we treasure God so much that we do it day and night. And we write it upon the, our doorposts and people that come into our house know that we are wholly acceptable unto God. I love that verse in Romans 12, 1 and 2. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a what? Living sacrifice. Holy acceptable unto God, which is your what? Reasonable service. That's what is expected of you. You see, I, I, you know, people say, well, I have such a great dad. He should be a great dad. He should be a great father. That's what he's supposed to do. When I was teaching in prison, my prisoners would say, Mr. Watson, I did the right thing today. Aren't you proud of me? And I said, you did what you were supposed to do. And yeah, I'm proud of you, but you did what you were what? Supposed to do. Fathers, we're honored today because we've done what we're supposed to do. Is lead. You know, folks, listen, too many homes are led by the mamas. Spiritually. Now, he said, they said, well, Brother Ronnie's gone to what? Meddling. At least I know when I am. Folks, too many ladies have led our, our home spiritually. It's time for the man to be spiritually the leader of his home. And our young people coming on today, they don't even know how. I'll tell you how. Glad you're here. Put God first and foremost. Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your what? My everything that is within you. And God will bless that. Now, I hadn't finished that verse. 
Romans 10, uh, 12, 1 and 2, 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformers. Transform this world by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, folks, listen. Fathers are, are, are to be consistent with their children, to be consistent in their faith. And folks, we shouldn't fall for anything. We should stand for the word of God and preach and teach and live the word of God. Folks, it's not what I say, it's what I do. You know, a, a lot of people can get up here and a lot of people can be, uh, uh, speak about how to be a good father. But folks, listen, you gotta live it. And I wanna tell you, some of your kids are going to fail and you're going to say, oh, you're going to blame yourself. I want to tell you something. Listen to me. If you've done everything that you can do, just trust God. Amen? And yeah, you've made some mistakes, but live consistently for the Lord. And I guarantee you, you put all your mind in God and God will take care of your family sooner or later. I believe that. I believe that with all my heart. You know, I, I wish it meant that our kids were going to be perfect and they'd be in church every Sunday and they'd be doing the same thing we're doing, right? But that doesn't just put my fire out. I'm praying for them every day. I am so excited about the opportunity to be a father. Aren't you? I mean, I didn't realize when I saw my first child March the 8th, 1977, I didn't realize what was going to happen. <laughs> I didn't realize the responsibility. Then all of a sudden, that precious thing was carried to me, and I didn't want to hurt it. <laughs> and she was handed to me, and I looked down. And that was the perfect little girl that I ever seen in my life. I mean, she was perfect. Of course, I counted the fingers to make sure they were there. And all the toes. And all the things was in place. And I looked at her and I said, you're the perfect thing in my life. And when she was growing up, I treated her that way. She was perfect. And I would never, ever take imperfection from her life. If she had, you know, and now y'all are going to think I'm a bad dad. I'm going to tell you a story. And yeah, I was a bad dad, all right? My daughter would come to me and she'd be, have a, uh, a coloring and she would say, Dad, look at this, this picture. I colored it for you. And I would always say, oh, that's a beautiful picture. But you need to stay in the lines. And then she'd bring me another picture. And I said, that's a beautiful picture. You stayed in the lines, but you need to color one direction. And it was years later that I realized that I didn't want to accept imperfection from her because I thought she was perfect. And I had to cry with her one night and I had to get her in a situation. She was about grown, 17, 18 years old. And I told her, I said, sweetheart, I raised you wrong. Sweetheart, I did the wrong thing. I expected too much out of you. I expected not, not for you to make mistakes. I expected you to be perfect. And your dad is sorry that he raised you in that manner. I put too much pressure on you. And she cried with me. And we cried together. And she wrote me a, a letter and said, Dad, I'm just so glad you're my dad. I got that this week. But I want to tell you and she said, thanks for not judging me. Thanks for supporting me where I am. 
That meant more to me than anything. But folks, listen. They've got to see God living in us. Our children have got to see the master living in us. And that we're absorbed by the master. That's what real men do. You know, a lot of people say, well, I'm going to protect my family. Protect them with God. And God's love. And yes, I ask for God to give me a gentle heart. Amen? I think there's a lot of people in this room that needs a gentle heart. And I want God to give me a gentle heart as I deal with life and as I deal with my family. Now I have nine grandkids. Two of them are here. Linda and I haven't slept in days. I mean, we're blessed. I'm glad they're here, but I'm glad they're going home tomorrow. No, I'm just... The fact of the matter, folks, I want to live in front of those grandkids and they look at Grandpa and say, Grandpa loves the Lord. Mimi loves the Lord. They're absorbed by God because they worship God night and day. That's what God wants. That's what it means to be real men. It's tough to raise children. In our society today, all we do is entertain them. Put them in front of a TV or a computer now and let them entertain themselves. We need to be a part of their lives. Fathers, I thank you for being great fathers. And I challenge you to even be a greater father. And I can't tell, and you can't tell your children what to do, most of you now, right? But what is the one thing you can do? Wrap them up in prayer and ask God to protect them. Our Father, I thank you for your word and how your word has directed our hearts to you and how your word teaches us, God, that we need to be consistent. We need to be obedient. We need to be available to do the work you've called us to do. And that's to be parents. God, I must tell you, it's not easy to be a parent. I don't know how to be a parent except through your grace and through your mercy. And Lord, I pray, God, that you will bless this time together as we look at our lives. God, if we hadn't been the parent that we ought to be, God, I pray that you'll challenge us today. God, if there's Christians here that have never been uh, what they need to be, I pray, God, that you will challenge them today. And God, if there's one here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior in their life, Lord, that they might come to you today and receive power to be all they can be, a real man and a real woman loving the Lord with their whole heart, with their whole mind and might in the spirit of God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we stand together, Miss Salinas is going to play through an invitation and maybe sing, but let God speak to your heart right now. If you need to do business with God, won't you come and do it right now as we pray and as we sing. As I am without
Just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blood to thee whose blood. Thank you for your attention this morning. Was it good to be in the house of the Lord? Are you glad you came? I'm glad you came too. We are one.